In this episode, I'm going to show you a three step process to take care of flyaway hairs in Photoshop. Now think of these three steps as three hammers in an assembly line. Okay, so there's an assembly line and three hammers, hammer number one, two and three. And you have to flatten a piece of metal. Now the piece of metal is going this way and the hammer number one just hit the piece of metal and it flattens up. So if it flattens up, you just need to close the assembly line and your job is done. Which means in step one, sometimes your job is finished. Okay. Now sometimes what happens is that the piece of metal goes, the hammer number one hits it and it doesn't quite flatten it, but it helps. It doesn't quite flatten it the way you want it, but it helps. So the assembly line moves forward to hammer number two and hammer number two does it. Okay. And so you need to close the assembly line. Your job is done. So that way in step two, your flyaway hairs are gone. Now, sometimes it's done in step three, but sometimes what's going to happen is that the first hammer, when it hits the metal, it's going to break. Okay. The second hammer might break and only the third hammer might work. Sometimes what might also happen is that the first and the third hammer breaks and the second hammer works. So here's the thing. These steps are like, Sometimes step one will do all your job, will remove all your stray hairs very simply. If step one does not remove all of them, only then you move to step two. And if step two doesn't remove all of them, you move to step three. Now, sometimes just by looking at the image, you can easily say that step one and two will not work. Only step three will work or only step two will work. So whenever you are removing flyaway hairs, just go through these three steps and you're done. They'll be removed. And sometimes there's a hidden fourth step that might be involved that we're going to talk about in this video. So that's why in this tutorial, I have been fortunate to receive an image which requires all the three steps. Now your image might be done in step one or step two or just step three. It totally depends. But I have chosen an image to show you all the three step and the hidden fourth step. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and before we begin, I have to say I'm so grateful to have Michael Artemis let me edit his photo. He's an international glamour and swimsuit photographer. You gotta check out his work. This guy has his own magazine. Imagine. Isn't that interesting? All right. So let's jump straight in. So before getting into removing flyaway hairs, I already did some adjustments in Lightroom. Just have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after, just a little bit of adjustments in Lightroom to make the image pop out. So let's go ahead and delete the before. Now let's work on the stray away, stray hairs. So to remember these three steps and keep them in mind, you can use this acronym to help you out. D S L. So D actually stands for dust and scratches. This will make sense later in the tutorial. S actually stands for spot healing brush too. Okay. And L actually stands for liquify. All right. So let's get back to the tutorial. So first make a copy of the background layer, controller command J or the layer in which your subject is, and then convert this into a smart object because whatever we do, we want it to be non-destructive. And also we want to go back. We want the ability to go back and change the values. So filter, convert for smart filters. The other way of converting this into a smart object, right click on it and click on convert to smart object. Now this is being converted into a smart object. Now here's the thing. Some of the filters are, cannot be applied to smart objects. So you need to make sure that you change this into eight bit. So you can go to image mode and eight bits just to be on the safer side so that every filter applies. Now what you have to do, you have to go to filter. Now you might not have gone here, but this is filter dust and scratches. So now this is the fun part. The fun part is let's zoom in and get close near the hair. Okay. Now once you're zoomed in, in order to move through the image, there are two ways to do that. Press and hold space bar and your cursor change to a hand, changes to a hand, and then you can move in through the image. Also what you can do, you can press H and then uh, this doesn't work this way. And let me just quickly show you when you're zoomed in and you want to move, what you can do, you can press H and then this changes everything to a bird's eye view and just move, drag your mouse to the area that you want to zoom in, maybe her tattoo and release it. 
it zooms into that area. All this while, H is held, okay? So if you wanna move again, hold it, then there you go, okay? So that was the trick there. Go to filter, noise. Uh, where did noise go? Dust and scratches. I kinda lose track time and again. So now, decrease the radius all the way to one for now. Zoom in and keep on increasing the aid radius and just stop, just stop at the point where the stray hair go away. Single stray hair go away. Now this cannot go away. Something like this just cannot go away. Where the st single stray hairs go away. Just stop at that point. Okay. Don't go too far. Of course it's gonna go away in values like 56, but you need to just stop at the value where it just goes away. So, and also you need to have the contrast between the hair and the background. So I find 20 to be a good number, press OK. And the threshold is zero. Now once it applies, see, all you have to do, it's totally gone. Now what if we paint in this layer, paint with this layer on the areas that had stray hairs, wouldn't that be amazing? So we would go to the smart filter layer, this one, and control a command I. So this makes the effect completely black. Now take the brush and just paint in this area with white. Also what you can do, there's also one more thing which you can do, that instead of having the smart filters doing the masking, you can add a negative mask to this one. Also, press and hold alter option, click on this one. This is also your way to go this, or you can also do this, okay? And paint in with white over the stray hairs. Now you can do this very quickly, you can make the brush a little bigger and you can paint in. Now here's the negative side of it. Now once you do it, it is gone. But in the background we have some noise. So we need to add some noise to this to match with that of the background. So what we would do, we would go to filter, noise, and then add noise. Now. See, most of the filters are grayed out, you know why? Because the mask is selected. So we have to select this one. And then go to filter, noise, add noise. Now you need to find a happy place where this matches with this one. So this is too much, this is too less. I guess 1.5 would be fine. And click OK. Now as you can see, the noise is too small. Okay, we need to make the noise bigger. So as talked about in the previous tutorial about skin tones, about skin texture, how to make a noise bigger? Add a blur to it, simple. So go to filter, noise, no, filter blur, Gaussian blur. I'm just waking up guys, just forgive me on that. So add a little blur to it, 0 0.3 is fine, now it's matching. So too much doesn't help, just a little bit blur. 0 0.2, let's try 0 0.3, 0 0.2. 4 is too much, 0 0.3 is fine, and click, okay, now it's pretty much clear, pretty much matching, fakeable, all right, so we can make, you can't make out. Now let's come back to the mask and just simply paint over the stray hairs, and gone, right? So I'm gonna fast forward the process, and uh, guys, this is not gonna take some, take a lot of time, this takes less than a minute, okay? But I'm gonna fast forward the process for you so that you just don't get harassed and stuff like that. Right, so let's do it. Now as you can see, I have removed some of the stray hairs. Not all of them, but some of them. Have a look. So this is the before, this is the after. Much of it is gone. But you might have observed that I didn't touch here. I didn't go here. You know why? I didn't go here either. You know why? Because have a look. If I just turn off the mask, you can have a look. There's a little bit red here. There's a little bit red here. So you cannot go that inside, okay? So you can only remove all those single strands using this method. So if your image just have just has kind of single strands coming out of the photo, not a lot of junk there. So this first method will just work fine for you. If not, this will help, okay? Sometimes you just have to go directly to the third method, but you get the idea. So now, how to figure out whether to paint in an area or not. For example, have a look. How to figure out how further you can paint. So just press and hold shift and click on this mask. This turns off the mask. So as you can see, you can paint up to this point, not beyond that. Then you're gonna see reds. So press and hold shift and click, click back in. So as you can see, just to this level. Can you paint here? How to figure out? Press and hold shift, click on this. Yes, you can paint here. So 
simply you can paint here you can make the brush a little harder smaller and paint simple okay so we have figured it out pretty easily we have gone too far so that's the way to go about it okay for example have a look here would you be able to paint here if yes to what extent press and hold shift and click on this no we won't be able to because as you can see there are bits and pieces of reds here and there we cannot do that can you paint here yes you can okay so simply we would go and paint right easy very easy to make it even more faster you can make the brush bigger and take it through the hair like so like this maybe something like that so you can do that if you want to so can you paint here how to figure out press and hold shift uh, and click on it no there's a little bit of red there you cannot paint there okay can you paint here no you cannot paint here so you need to really slowly figure out where you can paint and where you cannot so sometimes you can go overboard so you can paint in with black to, into these areas back again and then paint in then press and hold shift and figure out how further you can paint so this further so you can go with white and then just paint up to this point right you get the idea make the brush a little harder so that it just doesn't turn out to be soft right so i'm gonna fast forward again and clean up the extra messes So that pretty much wraps up our first step, first process. Sometimes you're done with the first process. Sometimes nothing happens through the first process when the hair is completely blowing away. Now it's time for us to move on to the second process or the second step. Okay. So create a new layer and name it stray hairs. Okay. And let's zoom in. Now select the spot healing brush tool. Remember DSL. First one was dust and scratches. Second one was spot healing brush so now all you have to do select the spot healing brush tool right click on it if it's the patch tool selected right click on it select the spot healing brush tool make the brush a little smarter harder and then change the mode to replace now why replace now if it was normal let's have a look now when it when you edit with normal and when you try to remove it now what happens is it leaves a kind of bleed now i need to find a hair with that okay so when it is normal and you kind of help try to remove it it leaves a bleed okay now when you do with replace it does not do that okay so this i cannot really show you right now let me show you replace this just cuts at this point but what happens with normal it is that it just does not cut at that point that kind of leaves a bleed not happening with this one but usually happens so make sure you change it to replace and then because we are doing this on a new empty layer we need to make sure that sample all layers is checked so that the new layer just comprises of the replacements it makes it kind of closer to non-destructive right so let's go ahead and do that really quickly all right cool let's make it a little dark uh, harder and smaller so as you can see, this layer just comprises of this replacement. Now, isn't that interesting? All right, so let's turn back on the other layers. Okay, so now we can easily go ahead and remove the ones which we haven't. Now here's another trick here. Now while you're removing stray hairs, just take the brush a little bit inside while you do that. For example, uh, I need to find a stray hair to show you the example. For example, you're removing this. Don't just Make the brush a little bit bigger than the hair. Remove it, don't just stop here, okay? Take it a little in, okay? Now that's the thing which you have to do with all of this. Take, make the brush a little smaller, take it a little in. Okay. Don't stop just at the edge, take it a little in. So that helps Photoshop fill up that line, just fill up those that area with the line, okay? Take it a little in, gone. Take it a little in, gone. Okay, one by one, this is gonna take time. That's why we did the step one first, because step one is really easy. Just add the dust and scratches, it's simply paint over, take the brush, paint over the hair, gone. Sometimes step one doesn't work. Sometimes it helps. So when it helps, step two, step two, remove the extra ones that you could not remove using step one. Now, I would not touch this area. Why? Because there's a whole junk in here. You, you don't wanna mess with that. You don't wanna mess with that. Also, I won't touch another area, which is this one. 
This will only be solved in step 3. For now, just figure out single single stray hairs that you can fix. Okay. So I'm going to fast forward this as usual and let's just quickly do that in fast motion. So as you can see, we finally did remove the extra stray hairs. Look at the before after. Here, one here, a little bit from here, a little bit from here. And if you watch it properly, you can see that I didn't touch these areas. Okay, I just didn't touch these areas because the hairs are not sticking out. Okay, they're not sticking out, they're just laying down. So this can only be done using step three. So the ha extra hairs that are sticking out cannot be removed by the first method, shall be removed by this. Okay, now let's go ahead and move on to the third method and the third method is DSL. What's the third L? Liquify. For liquify, we need to create a merged layer. Alright, so to create a merged layer, it's simple. Create a new layer and then Alt, Control, Shift and E. If you're using a Mac, it's Option, Command, Shift and E. Now, convert this into a smart object filter and convert for smart filters because Liquify can be applied to smart objects and it's always best to be able to edit it again, right? Then add filter, Liquify. Now, let's go ahead and try to get rid of these things, the extra stuff, right? Here, here, right? Let's try. So, add a freeze mask brush mask. Make sense, no? So, freeze mask. Now, you don't want the areas in the face to be edited. You don't want the uh, hair, the flow of the hair to be affected. So you just have to paint in these areas. That these areas won't ever be affected. Okay. Just paint in these areas. You don't want these areas to be affected. Great. Just a little bit on the corners will do. I did some mistake in here. All right. So just quickly here okay now that's pretty much good you can take it a little further if you want to and if you want to be super safe what you can do you can I just painted some extra you can take the eraser and erase it and take back the freeze mask and you can paint an inside if you want to but you don't need to right so be just to be super safe now these are the areas that won't be affected no matter how much you apply liquify all right, now take the forward warp tool, the shortcut to which is W, and then just simply make the brush a little bigger. Make the brush of the size of the thing you want to edit, you want to push, okay? So in this layer, hairs are this big, so you make the brush of the equal size, and then slowly nudge it inside. Just slowly do that, okay, very slowly. It's about nudging in slowly. Just nudge it in slowly. Make it a little bigger. Just nudge. Don't do it all the way in, in at once. Nudge it slowly with love. All right. So this is done. That area is done. So can we take care of this area? Let's have a look. Not much, but uh, yeah, you get the idea. Now we were talking about these areas, right? So these areas can also be nudged in if you want to nudge them in. Make the brush a little smaller and you can nudge them in if you want to. You can nudge them in. You can nudge it in, right? Have a look. Just nudge it in. And you can nudge it here in. I'm sorry for the clicking noise that my mouse is making, but that's the way it is. Just nudge. Make it a little smaller. Nudge it in. Great. So, so you take your time on doing a really quick job of it, right? So just simply nudge, right? So have a look. It's looking so much more better now. So it's all nudged in. The hair is all fixed right. So also I see one more thing. We have to nudge this in too. So have a look. Make the brush a little bigger. If you want to, of course, you can leave it the way it is, but if you want to, you can nudge it into, I guess I liked it this way. All right. 
So that's pretty much done. So let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the after, this is the before. See how beautifully we nudged the hair in. See how beautifully we nudged this in, this in. Okay, so once you're satisfied, click OK. So let's have a look. So before, after, we nudged things in. Now this is pretty much done, done for the tutorial. I know what you're thinking, the hidden step four. All right, so the hidden step four is nothing but using the clone stem tool and the patch tool to remove some extra areas that couldn't be removed by any of these three methods, the extra junk, okay? So have a look at this extra junk. It's totally optional if you want to remove it, right? So you can use the clone stem tool or what you can use is the patch to. So it's best to create a new layer with everything merged. Right. Now, what you can do, where did my toolbar go? My toolbar just went away. Let's make it bigger. Okay. So it's just minimized by some mistake. All right. Now take your clone stamp tool. So here's the clone stamp and then just simply break it away first. Now you cannot just straight away use the patch tool. Now here's the thing. If you use the patch tool, Patch tool is a great tool for removing things that are on by itself, like an island. So if you had to remove something like an island from an ocean, it's easy to remove from a patch tool. But if that island is attached to a part of land, you cannot. So the trick here is to break the land down into an island and then use the patch tool to remove it. For example, if you had wanted to remove something like this using the patch tool like this, it would see it smears, the red just smears, right? So you need to first break it down and then remove. So to break it down, you got to use the clone stamp tool. So take sample from here and just simply break it down. Let's change the mode to normal and just break it down. It's not breaking it down. I don't know why. Oh, opacity is three. My God. All right. Let's, you need to zoom in quite a bit and break it down. Take, keep taking samples from there. And you know how to take samples. Press and hold alter option. Click on it. It takes samples from that particular area and paints on the other area with that sample. Okay. It just breaks it down. Right. Totally broken down. Now breaking down this area. So take sample from here and just break it down. Okay. Broken down. Now it's simple. Need to match here a little bit. All right. Done. Now simple. Select the patch tool and then select this area very simply. And make sure normal is selected and then you replace it with this one. Gone. Gone. Have a look before, after. That kind of junk is gone. Now you can always go ahead and remove this extra junk if you want to, but this is looking good. Also, if you want to remove this junk, you can remove that using the clone stamp tool or even the patch tool or the combination of both. So the clone stamp tool, let's do that. Make the brush a little hotter and you can remove it like that. But I like the way it is, I guess. I like it. All right. Now let's have a look. This extra junk here, we want to get rid of it. How to get rid of it. So simple. Select the quick selection tool and just select the outer area. Now make sure auto enhance is checked. Now take the clone stamp tool because this creates a fence, a fence, not a fence. I, all, um, I usually mispronounce that. So no matter whatever you do, this won't affect this area. This won't affect the area outside the selection. This will only affect the area inside the selection. So just sample this area, line it up well like this and paint. Gone. Just sample this area, line it up well and paint gone. Just sample this area, line it up well, gone. Sample this area, line it up well, gone. Sample this area, line it up well, gone. Isn't that beautiful? All right. So let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the after, of course, and let's zoom in. This is the after. This is the before. This is the after. Totally gone. Isn't that interesting? So that's pretty much it for this video. Hope this video helped you. Just remember the three steps. DSL, dust and scratches, spot healing brush tool, liquify. And at the end, there's a hidden one, which uses the combination of clone stamp to patch to selections. So a lot of things, an arsenal of tools to help you deal with 
fly away hairs. So, I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, click on that bell button so that you don't miss any other future tips, tricks and tutorials. I will see you guys in my next one till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.